the moral code that which we should be living by. We don't earn salvation by keeping the law. No one except Christ has ever been able to do that. But we do honor God when our lives conform to reveal his will in us and through us. When people see us, they see us. When they see us, they see him. You know, one of the problems with religious people, if you've ever met a few, they usually are uptight, they're frustrated, they're judgmental, and they're self-righteous. Amen. Y'all don't know anything? Amen. I'm just saying, if it's you, just keep looking forward. I ain't calling names. I just said the problem with religious people, they see the Bible as a religious set of rules, and they focus on do's and don'ts, not who and why. That's right. They focus on the do's and the don'ts. And see, Christians, we should be relaxed, we should be loving, because we're supposed to see the Bible as this amazing love story between God and us. Him pursuing us, us pursuing him, him redeeming us. It's supposed to be a love story. Knowing how much he loves us, that no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're facing, that we can overcome through him. We should be relaxed. You know, we read the word. We don't read the word because we want to check it off our do list. We want to read the word because we want our life to reflect it. We want to walk according to the life principles because we know, we know we are aware that we are naturally open to going contrary to truth. And so we keep it in front of us. When we read Corinthians about what love is and what love is not, it reminds us that we don't, you know, we got to keep a short offense, count of offenses. It means we cover. It, you know, it's not envious. We got to be reminded of those things so that it's being fruitful in our lives. You know, we as believers should be conscious of our sin, but we should be focused on loving Jesus. We need to be aware of what's out there, but our position in Christ should be what drives us. It should be what guides our conversation. I want to, in the Old Testament, Ezra and Nehemiah, they had some issues, y'all. I'm talking people back then, Lord knows, kind of look like what's going on today. These people were breaking God's law left and right. So their response was, let's make a whole other set of new rules. Come on, let's fix this. They're not keeping the first set of rules, so let's give them some more. So they came up with all these rules. They came up with 600 laws. 65 of them had to do with the Sabbath alone. It was actually compiled into this book of over 800 pages of nothing but laws. So the response to man not keeping God's laws was to give them 600 laws. <laughs> that they couldn't keep. I'm just saying. That was, that was man's response. So their whole point was, you know what, let's clean the outside of the cup. Let's get them doing, 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 and that'll get them right, is what man said. But God said, no, let's get the inside right, and then the inside will make them, the outside correspond with the do. You know, God's response was Jesus. His response was Jesus. No more laws, but the personified fulfillment of the law. Christ himself would literally come and die in the place of every lawbreaker. He would be the substitute. So when it comes to this false image of God related to laws and rules, we need to remember three things. You know, acceptance cannot be earned. No person can earn acceptance from God by obeying laws. No matter how hard we try, the scripture says no one will be declared righteous by obeying laws. Not going to happen. The second thing is you need to accept the need of a savior in your life. The purpose of the law was for followers to see that they needed a savior and they needed a mirror for a holy living. You can say, I'm not a bad person, but the Bible says, you know what, the only holiness you can get is from God. It says, you know what, if you've broken one law, you've broken them all. Don't raise your hand, but I ain't going to ask you if you ever lied. If you ever stole anything, if you ever lusted over everything, if you, any, if you covered anything, to be broke, to break one of those, make you guilty of them all. So there's no room for judgment. No room for judgment. The last thing is acceptance of the perfect work of Calvary. The way you make things right between you and God is by accepting and trusting in the perfect work of Jesus on the cross. You know, Paul talked about all this bad news and all this other stuff about what was going on, but then about sinfulness and God's condemnation, but then he gives us this really wonderful news. He confirms in Romans 3, 24 again that it's not me, but he. There is a way to declare not guilty by trusting Jesus to take away our sins. And trusting means to put our confidence in Christ to forgive us and to make us right with God and to power us and to live the way he taught us. 
You know, this is the example I wanted to share with you. Because I just want us to see this. When you are born, I love my husband. <laughs> when you're born, you're born into sin. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing about your life. <laughs> you're born into sin. You don't choose it. It was chosen for you. And what happens, you know, you cannot approach a holy God in sin. You know, because what happens is he's born in the sin. So even, and I'm a holy guy. So when he tries to approach me, and he tries to come toward me, and he's trying to come and get access to what I have, I have to turn away. Because I can't be in the presence of sin. So all that I have access to, see, he's just my creation. He's not my child yet. He's a creation, but he's not my child. But the moment he makes a decision to come into a relationship with me, and he decides to, <laughs> and then he decides that he wants to move from creation status to child status, when he accepts me, and he realizes that the work that I did on the cross finished the deal for him, and everything that I had, and all that I have access to, when he comes to me, when there's me, or when there's an issue, and he begins to approach me, <laughs> then I can embrace him. Because now he is my righteousness. <laughs> that was not how that was supposed to happen. <laughs> but now I can receive him. There's nothing that he can get at. Everything that I have, he now has access to. Because he's now put, put on the righteousness of who I am. He is now in right standing with me. There's relationship here. He went from creation to child. He went to joint heir with me. So there's nothing that he can ever go through now and I not be there with him. Because I'm not going to leave him or forsake him because he's mine. And I'm his. And so what happens is, thank you very much, what happens is we have to realize that religion complicated with rules, what God simplified with one act of love. What religion complicated with rules God simplified with one act of love. And that love is he gave. He gave. See, God's solution is available to all of us regardless of our background and our past behavior. That matter where you've been, that matter what you've done, the righteousness of God is available to you if you receive it. You can transition from just being a creature, a creation, to being a child. And you can get access to everything that was purchased for you on Calvary. All you got to do is receive it. And so my question to you today is whether or not you're sitting here and you're going through many trials of all kinds. Don't allow that false image of God to get inside of you. Rejoice. Because you got to know it's going to bring you to a place of maturity and a place of completeness. That's beyond anything that you can understand. you got to realize that whatever you're going through is just a temporary transition. It's a temporary issue, but God is in the process of proving your faith, allowing you, to, allowing it to become the most important thing in your life. See, sometimes things have to die. They have to be removed. Things have to happen for you to truly understand my faith has got to carry me. My feelings have got to come into check. You got to ask yourself, do you have an image of God that's based on a bunch of rules and laws, feeling like you never measure up and you can never be good enough? Are you keeping God at an arm's distance because you don't think that you can do what you need to do? All you need to do is to receive what Jesus did and allow that to carry you. you got to realize it's sitting in here today that you are the righteousness of God through your relationship with Jesus. And anything that you face, you face in life with a loving Father. And I know we struggle sometimes to understand what Abba Father means and good, good Father means, especially if you didn't have a good earthly father, that's when you have to allow him to teach you. And you got to get in the word so you can learn his nature and you can learn his character. you got to focus your life on following him, knowing him, and resting in the truth that you will see him again. That this is not the end. That there is more. You can stand to your feet.
You have a loving Father who cares about every part of your life. Everything that concerns you concerns Him. And you've got to know that. You've got to know that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you today for reminding us it's not about rules and rituals. That is all about relationship. It's not about us living a problem-free life, but it's all about us just pressing into your presence and allowing you to prove in us who you are. It's about you locating us and reminding us that you will carry us through all that we're facing and that we can trust you, God, because you are trustworthy. So right now, God, even as I pray, there are people here under the sound of my voice, Lord, who might be struggling through these problems and the wrong image of who you are and that you've forgotten about them, that you don't see them, that you don't care, God, could be plaguing their minds right now. And if that's you, just wave your hand at me. Nobody's looking around but me. If the problems have become so big that you feel like you can barely even function, I see those hands. May the word today, God, remind us that it's you, God, that we can trust you. May we take these moments right now to rehearse the victories that you've already won in our life, knowing that whatever we're facing and whatever we're dealing with is nothing in the hands of a great big God. So, God, I just declare that your presence and your peace and your power touch them right now, God. And for them to recognize that you are the burden lifter. And that is not their reputation that's being attached. It's not their lives that's being attached. It's the, the power and the presence and the anointing and the promise that they have in their life. That the enemy wants them to forfeit their joy. But God, I declare right now in the name of Jesus that they are refusing to move off your word. Maybe you're here today. And you've been caught up and feeling condemned because of the rules and the rituals. And you feel like you can't measure up and you're not doing this right and you can't do that. If that's you and that's been a struggle for you, just wave your hand at me. Just wave your hands. I see those hands. Thank you, God. Even right now, God, even in this moment, God, may you help them see that it's not about a religious anything. It's not about a ritual. It's not about a rule, God, but it's all about relationship. And God, that there's absolutely nothing that they've done or have done or will do that can separate them from your love because they are your child. So God, I just declare that your precious Holy Spirit begin to minister to them and speak to them and to remind them it's not about their do. It's about their who. God, thank you, Jesus, right now in this moment. Just minister to them, Lord minister to them. Or maybe you're here and you don't even know him as Lord and Savior. You don't even know how to walk this thing out without him. You don't even know who you are and who he is. And you want to step into the promises and step into the benefits and step into the authority that we talked about today. If that's you, wave your hand at me. If that's you, wave your hand. Hallelujah. I see those hands. God, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, I just declare right now, even in your presence, that those false images of who you are have fallen off. And that right now, God, they're able to walk into that relationship. That salvation is theirs today, Lord. God, I thank you. And if I'm feeling this in my heart. If that was you and you waved your hand because that's really what you, what you want. I want to ask you to step out in faith today. If you're willing to step out in faith, would you come up here with me? If that's really your heart's desire. Because I want to get some information in your hands and I want to partner you with somebody that can help you not just come up again, but to be able to walk it out. I saw your hands, but I just want to, I just want to challenge you. Because there are people here who want to walk through this with you. You're not alone. And it's so easy to go through all kinds of hell and hurt and pain alone and suffer in silence and continue to go around the same mountain over and over again. But if enough is enough and you are truly ready to release and receive, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to give the Holy Spirit a moment because I saw several hands. And for some of you, it seems like it's life or death. And it could be for your spirit. It could be for your future. I just want to give you that opportunity. 